Look inside a fairly ordinary living room. Television, video, carpet, electric light. Nothing very exceptional. So let's remove some things. What have they in common? If you've said electric things, you've been right. Until now, that is. There's just one thing that connects all these. Everything that's gone was made using... One more clue. It comes from structures like these. Answer. This is an oil production platform in the North Sea and it's used to extract oil and gas from rocks deep beneath the seabed. All the things removed from the room were made from oil. Without it, there'd be no plastics, no synthetic fibres, fewer medicines and cosmetics, no modern trains, planes, cars, buses, and most of our factories, industries and electricity power stations would close down. The list could go on. The simple fact is, the human species has become almost totally dependent upon oil and gas. So, how was oil formed? The answer may surprise you. It starts at the sun. Light energy is converted by plants into food. Photosynthesis. Chemical process in which plants use light energy to make food from simple substances like carbon dioxide and water. It takes place mainly in the leaves of green plants. No matter what or how small the plant, it contains and stores energy. That's why we eat and animals eat to get the energy for movement and for warmth. This test will show how much energy food stores. A test tube filled with water is heated by burning small bits of food. Um, well, we were burning pieces of food like shreddies and bananas and then um, we found out how much energy they release when they're burnt. How much energy is released is worked out by measuring how much the temperature increases during the test. That's 1.4, this is the new one. What do you mean? You should this is, that's, that's the dried banana. <laughs> to do this, they needed to know the weight and temperature of the water before and after burning the food. As they also knew the weight of the food at the start, they can calculate how much energy was in it. Mind you, is this an accurate test of how much energy was released? And what's happened to the food in the process? Crumbled living goods, that's brown, and that is black and crumbly. It's quite food, you know what I mean? Yeah. When we feed, we break down the food and energy is released into the body. The same thing happens when animals eat, whether on land or in water. And those creatures in the water, when they die, they sink to the bottom. Brown oh my God. Oh no. As these students dredge the pond, they are uncovering this oily, muddy, smelly sludge. All that remains of creatures once living in the pond, mixed with leaves and dead plants. The sun's energy stored in all this dead stuff is slowly being released back into the environment as it decomposes. But this is only a pond in the 21st century. What's it got to do with oil for petrol and plastics? Well, let's go back in time. Before you were born. Before there were cars. Before there were humans. Back millions of years to a world dominated by the largest creatures ever seen. Beneath shallow seas, tiny creatures flourished, and when they died, their remains sank, complete with stored energy. The same process is happening today in the pond, with one big difference. Well, two, if you count people falling over in it. In prehistoric times, the remains were covered by mud and sand, 
With no oxygen, they only partly decomposed. The energy was trapped. And then, after millions of years of squashing and squeezing of heat and pressure, the sludge became oil. Crude oil, it's called, buried beneath maybe thousands of metres of rock above. Which is why it takes drillers and drilling rigs and offshore platforms and ships to extract it. So what does oil look like? You won't see any out here. It's kept in pipes and tanks. You may have seen it though. It's something's gone very wrong. The oil slick off the coast of Orange County is coming on shore. The Coast Guard says half the oil that spilled off the California coast last week is still on the water. Hundreds of people worked furiously trying to... But if you could see crude oil normally, it might look like this. Or this. So why the difference? Well, it stands to reason. Oils come from so many different creatures mixed together in different proportions that oil formed in one place is bound to be different from oil formed somewhere else. But no matter what they look like, crude oils are made up of hydrogen and carbon. So guess what they're called? A. Carbohydrate B. Carrigen C. High carb D. Hydrocarbon If you said A, B or C you'd be wrong. The correct name for chemical compounds containing hydrogen and carbon is hydrocarbon. But while oil began as decaying remains at the bottom of the sea, is it today like a huge underground sea of oil? Nah. You know all about kitchen rolls, best way of getting rid of spilt drinks. That's because the paper is porous and water soaks into the pores. Oil's much the same in rocks that are porous. In fact, oil will keep moving through the pores until it reaches the surface. That's a pool of oil bubbling out of the pores. In ancient times, this thick tar would be used to waterproof boats for lighting and amazingly as healing ointments. More often though, it doesn't get this far. Trapped below by non-porous rock, it can't pass through. And to get it out? Well, it's a bit tougher than getting the water out of a kitchen roll. But that's another story. Meanwhile, wading through the pond has created a foul smell. That's from rotting vegetation at the bottom of the pond. Ideal conditions for methane gas to form. Bubbles coming up from the mud when it's disturbed also show methane forming here. And gas is nearly always found with oil, including methane. This is a molecule of methane gas. Each carbon atom has four single bonds. Here's another gas, ethane. And this is propane. And to make up a foursome, this is butane. Again, with four single bonds on the carbon atom. So as they all end in ain, what do you think this little family is called? A. All anes. B. Biplanes. C. Alkanes. D. Alcatraz. The answer is C. Hydrocarbon molecules where each carbon atom has four single bonds are called alkanes. So what else is there about hydrocarbons? Combustion. Hydrocarbons burn. That's what makes them so valuable as a fuel. Fuel. Combustible material used as a source of heat or power. Used in cooking, for powering engines and powering power stations. Oil and gas aren't the only fuels that come from the remains of 135 million year old fossils. Hang on. Here's another one of these. Fossil fuel. Fuels formed from the remains of plants and animals that died millions of years ago, like oil, gas and coal. This is an underground coal mine. The coal is about to be blasted out from the rocks by dynamite. Did that look safe to you? Anyway, coal comes from remains of forests that grew around the same time as the creatures that have become oil. And coal was the main source of the world's energy for many years, 
until oil was processed in large quantities. As fossil fuels burn, the energy trapped in them is released. It's one stage of what's called the carbon cycle. It starts where this program did, with the sun, with plants using light energy to make food from carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The carbon cycle is the process the carbon goes through to get back to the atmosphere. Some of it gets back quickly. Plants breathe out carbon dioxide, though less than they absorb. Animals and humans breathe it out too, of course. Carbon in bodies is passed along from creature to creature as food, as we've seen. You are 20% carbon. Eventually, animal waste from dead animals or animal excretion decomposes, returning the carbon to the atmosphere that way. And the longest process of all? The carbon trapped in fossil fuels. Today we are releasing energy that was trapped when the dinosaurs were around. One way or another, it gets back to the atmosphere, only to be reabsorbed by the plants. And the process just keeps on going. There could be carbon in our bodies that was once in a dinosaur. So you might think that burning fossil fuels was the end of a much delayed but perfectly natural process. Not quite. The problem is that it's all happening rather quickly. So quickly that it's affecting the delicate balance of our environment. It took about 65 million years for oil and gas to form and you've just used up another chunk of it for the electricity to run this video. And we'll have to wait around for another 135 million for a new supply. So what's the answer? Turn off this video, did you say? In a moment. Stop all the cars and electricity. Do away with plastics and everything else we've grown up with. I don't think so, do you? Find alternative sources. Maybe. Use the existing resources more carefully. Yes. But how? While you decide, we'll just have to keep on using the products of oil and gas.